Welcome everyone to our concert for this evening. This is the final event in our online conference series, Breaking Barriers Through Music. My name is Diana Dumlawala, and I currently serve as president for the Florida State Music Teachers Association. It is my pleasure and honor to introduce our esteemed conference artist, pianist William Chapman Nyaho. Nyaho, as many of us call him, is a Ghanaian American and is an active solo recitalist, duo pianist, and chamber musician, giving recitals and concerts throughout the United States and in Europe, Africa, Asia, South America, and the Caribbean, often focusing on, on music by composers of African descent. Nyaho's publications include a five volume anthology entitled Piano Music of Africa and the African Diaspora published by Oxford University Press. He received the 2022 MTNA Francis Clark Keyboard Pedagogy Award for this series. He has recorded three CDs of solo piano music by composers of African descent titled Senku, Asa, and Kete on the MSR Classics label. He has also recorded Aaron Copeland, Music for Two Pianos, and the recently released Five by Four as the Nyaho Garcia, Garcia duo. Reviewers have characterized his playing as brilliant, tender, and deeply moving. He is known for the depth of his expression, warmth of tone, and facile technique. Nyaho earned his degrees from St. Peter's College, Oxford University, the Eastman School of Music, and the University of Texas at Austin. He also studied at the Conservatoire de Musique de Genève in Switzerland. Nyaho's professional experience includes being a North Carolina visiting artist and associate professor of music at the University of uh, La Louisiana at Lafayette, where he held the Heyman Endowed Professorship and was the recipient of the Distinguished Professor Award. He has served as visiting professor of piano at Colby College and Pomona College, and has been an artist in residence at Williamette University and professor of piano studies at the Adamant Music School. He has also been on the summer faculty of the Interlochen Center for the Arts. Nyaho currently serves on the piano faculty at Pacific Lutheran University in Tacoma, Washington, as well as operating a private teaching studio in Seattle. By taking a quick glance at the program for this evening, it is easy to see that we are in for a real treat. The range of the repertoire we will be hearing is vast and written by composers from four continents. Enjoy this musical tour around the world. To ensure that the maximum amount of bandwidth is dedicated to the performance recording for tonight's concert, please click on stop video at the bottom of your screen. Also, if you find that the volume of the performance is a little bit low, we recommend that you use headphones or earbuds. Finally, please join me in giving a very warm welcome to our conference artist, William Chapman Yahoo. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here and uh, well, via Zoom. Uh, I just so dearly wished I'd been able to make it to um, Florida. And uh, well, Mother Nature has her own idea and agenda. So um, here we are. And I am going to be introducing the pieces as we go along and the video will be played. The first uh, three pieces I'm playing are really by Bach and uh, but Bach transcriptions. The first two are by Busoni, the piano transcriptions. The first one is Durch Adams Fall, which is taken from Bach's uh, collection of organ chorales, uh, Orgel Büchlein. And <clears throat> this piece I was very attracted to because of the rather um, chromatic har harmonic language. But um, in further uh, discovering this piece, uh, you can really see how Bach uses a lot of um, uh, what you would call symbolism 
and just depiction of what the text was saying. So Duke Adam's fall is pretty much about um, since Adam's fall came man's death. And uh, so uh, you're going to hear these low dropping bass lines, which are going to represent the fall of man or through Adam. And then in the middle part, what is so cool is there's um, a section where Bach is using these um, sharps and naturals, you know, and you know stuff like that. And it 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 almost um, depicts Adam's indecision as to whether you should take the apple or not. And then there's a, another line where you're going to see actually visually on the score, this serpentine line, which really represents the serpent. And then finally, you have the chorale tune on top. It's not very long, but I think it's just so powerful. And then the second one is taken from um, his 18 great chorales, uh, where he had these wonderful um, chorale tunes that he created and you know these works. And the Nun kommt den Highland Haydn Highland is based on Now Comes the Gentle Savior. And Bach, you can just hear this walking bass of the gentle Jesus walking through, you know, around with mankind. And then it's a very florid and beautiful um, version of the chorale tune. But what's so cool at the beginning, you're going to hear the first, the inner lines being um, played in canon. So it's really interesting, and I just hope you will uh, enjoy these pieces. And then finally, as a set, I thought I would do uh, Jesus' Joy of Man's Desiring, uh, which we all know and is taken from his cantata. Um, and actually, this particular arrangement is um, by Dame Myra Hess, which I think is absolutely beautiful. So do enjoy.
Let's see. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the next set of pieces I'm going to play are by um, Hill Smith, an African American composer um, who lived in, in the you know around the twenty nineteen hundreds and and actually um, passed away I think in the early two thousands. But he was just a wonderful composer. Wrote you know a lot of orchestral stuff and also um, some vocal works for. Uh, you know, based on Langston Hughes poetry and also um, Negro spirituals. And he wrote some two piano music and also some really fun piano music for intermediate students. And I thought it would be really good um, if, um, if I could program this for the piano teachers in Florida, just because I think these pieces are really good pedagogical um, pieces. You know, um, I've actually um, included some in my anthology. Uh, one, um, my scarf is yellow, and the other one is offbeat shorty. But you can find a whole set of these 12 um, pieces and they're all based on um, jazz, but I think that's pretty wonderful. And I really think that uh, um, Hill Smith, one of Hill Smith's um, um, ideas was that um, he could he could create a set of pieces just like Hindusainen or um, Album for the Young that uh, we could use. Uh, so if you think of these, if you're looking for alternatives to um, pieces like by Schumann or um, Chopin earlier, earlier pieces, I think these pieces will be, will be really good to check out. So uh, 12 pieces on called Faces of Jazz. Hope you enjoy them.
hope you liked those pieces. Uh, they're really fun to teach. And I hope uh, some of you will pick them up, order the books. Uh, you can probably get them at Subito. Uh, it's, a, it's a website. Or um, if you just go to Sheet Music um, Plus, you could find all 12 and um, get your students to read all kinds of wonderful things and enjoy um, the jazz, um, the jazz inflections. So as we're breaking down barriers, we've gone from, you know, German music to African-American music. We're going to sort of go a little further south and going to be playing um, just a short piece by Tanya Leon who is a Cuban, Afro-Cuban composer. And she just recently was honored at the Kennedy Centers for her lifetime achievements in music. And she's also um, got a Pulitzer Prize for one of orchestral pieces. But she's, um, she's written a lot of orchestral pieces. Um, she's written some piano music, some really cool piano music. But this one, this one is pretty much, um, she talks about um, it being sort of uh, the music she heard as, as a child. And tumbao is um, really kind of a dance form with, you know, a drumming dance form. So you're going to hear um, this clave, which is a five pattern chord, which you're going to hear in the Caribbean to West African music. You're going to hear it also in um, African American music. Bum, 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 bum. You're going to hear that quite a bit. And the piano, um, the piano is the extent of the range of the piano is being used. And then she also asks you to use uh, uh, your palm in certain places when you're performing. So hope you enjoy this. Tumbao by Tanya Leon.
All right. Okay. And that cold music. I think that's just fun stuff to play. And also a great piece for, for students to play in festivals and competitions, or just a good uh, encore for you as uh, professional teachers performing. So um, the next piece I'm going to play is by uh, Chen Yi. So going from uh, Caribbean music, I thought it'd be kind of fun to play music by a Chinese composer. But, and Chen Yi was just a wonderful, is just a wonderful composer. She's a, a professor at UMKC and um, she's written quite a lot of pieces for piano and is really prolific um, with chamber music and stuff. She's written pieces, um, some called, uh, one called Ban Ban, a bamboo dance, uh, uh, Northern Scenes, which is really quite an amazing piece and um, two Chinese bagatelles, piano solos for children. But one of her most recent pieces is the uh, uh, Variations on Awari Guli. It, and Awari Guli is um, a very beautiful song, which is um, common amongst the Uyghur people who are uh, an oppressed minority in China. And Awari Guli is, um, it's supposed to depict a very beautiful girl, Awari Guli. And these variations, I think, are just stunning. Um, they're written earlier on in her career, and she really um, is able to meld, you know, Chinese music as well as um, as well as uh, Western classical idioms. And so these set of variations. Uh, uh, you have the theme, which is just stark and just beautiful in um, two octaves apart and just a simple melody without any harmonic underpinning. And then it's followed by nine variations on a coda. The first three, are you can really hear the, she uses more of a Western tradition of creating more and more um, florid, uh, and embellished kind of variations, and then followed by um, a chorale kind of place, a you know dance thing. She uses a fugue, um, and then there's a really cool section where she uses the melody as an ostinato in six eight, whilst the left hand, um, and then finally into the right hand, she has this melody in two four. But I think it's just a very cool piece and definitely one of the pieces that I think should be uh, really in the uh, canon of music and should be assigned as a really wonderful set of variations if you're looking for variation forms to teach. So here we are with um, variations on Awariguli by Chinese composer Chen Yi.
Oh. That's, I think that's just a really lovely piece and definitely worth checking out. And uh, Chendi's, I, I just hope to be able to play more of her stuff. Just really interesting. Um, the next set of pieces, we're going from China into the African continent, and we will be playing, uh, I'll be playing for you three pieces by Fred Onovuero Swoke, a Nigerian uh, composer born in Ghana. Ghanaians like to claim him as well. And uh, he uh, grew up in, on, um, in Africa, on the, um, in Nigeria, but really um, went around the whole continent with his father when, you, uh, when his father would be traveling and accompany him. And he picked up a lot of music from the different parts of the African continent. And that really has influenced the, um, his compositions. Uh, Fred O is based in um, St. Louis, Illinois, and has uh, a really interesting, um, uh, I would say, a good organization going uh, called the Intercultural Initiative. And they, um, a whole group of musicians, are really promoting music that is um, influenced by African music. These uh, pieces I'm going to be playing are from a set called 24 Studies in African Rhythm. And they're not too long, but fun and challenging. And they are, they take their uh, um, form. The very first one takes its form from um, music from the central western part of Nigeria, and it's called Uje. And the basic rhythm you're going to hear in this is this bum, 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 ta, 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 through the piece. And um, there's a lot of crossing here and there towards the middle part of the piece. And, you know, fun and challenging, but just great piece to play. I highly recommend it. The second one is called Iroro. In, in sharp contrast is a real, um, starts off in a, you know, very dramatic way, and then settles into uh, a kind of trance-like um, um, atmosphere, which uh, Fred Onovers-Swoke says is, uh, depicts uh, the Nigerian river, the Niger river goddess. And so you're just going to hear this ostinato return, you know, just just going along whilst you're going to hear these major minor harmonies, which are very reminiscent of uh, the blues when you're going to, uh, when, when you hear that. And so uh, this also shows our connection with the blues from West African uh, uh, harmonic and melodic roots. And then um, we'll finish with Agbaja, which is really a, uh, uh, a wonderful dance, which is very common in the eastern part of Ghana. Um, my father's people are Evers, and Agbaja is one of the um, the big dances. And Fred Onuwaresoke actually uses um, is <laughs> is requiring the pianist to really incorporate all these drum elements that are going. So the first drum element you're going to hear is the gong element, which it goes bum, bum, ba, bum, 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 ba, bum, bum, ba, bum. And you can hear that in either six, eight or three, four. So that's hard to, uh, uh, to demonstrate here via Zoom, but trust me, it's um, one thing is interesting is that um, this music can be heard either in six, eight or three, four. And you'll find that out in West African music that it's very easy to just move in and out of the different meters. And so whilst you have that line going on, a second line comes in, a third line, and then you have these octaves in the bass, which depicts the, uh, the bass drum, the, the master drummer. And the master drummer in all the, dances in um, Ghana, for example, actually directs the uh, dances or what to do. So I will cut this short and 
enjoy these three dances studies in African rhythm. Definitely check them out. There are 24 of them.
Okay. Hope you enjoy those. Um, there are a whole bunch of many more that you, uh, that are worth checking out. Um, not to plug this, but um, I have a CD of six of them. Um, and you can also find um, some other recordings. I think there's a complete recording of all 24 of them. Definitely worth checking out. Fred Onovuero Suoke. Um, I'm going to finish off with um, three neg um, Negro spirituals arrangements. So in essence, um, my idea was to start off with three Bach chorale and then finish with three um, three uh, Negro spiritual arrangements. And these are by Margaret Bonds. Uh, Margaret Bonds uh, grew up in the Chicago area, studied with uh, Florence Price and has written quite a lot of wonderful works uh, for, for voice and piano, for um, orchestra and choral stuff. She was a phenomenal pianist and she was the first African-American to play with uh, a symphony orchestra um, and that was the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. And uh, she was just a phenomenal pianist. What's so sad about um, is that she was so good and she just had a lot of stuff committed to memory that um, there's very little piano music that's written down of hers that we have. But um, we have these spirituals suites. We have um, one called Tang America, and uh, we have a fugue. Of, so we have a few pieces, but when you listen, when, when you listen to all these amazing Negro spirituals that um, the likes of Florence Pro, um, Leontine Price or Kathleen Battle or Jesse Norman or Daryl Taylor or any of these wonderful people have uh, performed. I'm sure you'll find in them quite a lot of Negro spiritual um, arrangements by Margaret Bonds. So the first one is The Valley of the Bones and um, is based on you know, the dry valley and then the bones. So getting connected to the spirit of the Lord just kind of goes across the, the valley and the bones get connected to the bones and, uh, and until you have humans again. And then the second one is based on um, Peter Go Ring Them Bells, which is just a beautiful piece. And the last one is based on uh, Wade in the Water. And you're going to hear in Margaret Bond's music, really pianistic. It, you have blues inflections, jazz inflections, gospel inflections, and uh, they're very, very worthwhile. Um, they need to be programmed way more and become a regular part of the canon. So I hope you will enjoy these three pieces by Margaret Bonds, Spirituals Suite.
Well, I want to thank Florida State Music Teachers for inviting me to come and be a guest artist here. And, and I, I'm just very grateful that your theme was breaking down barriers. And, you know, I hope I was able to try and show we can break down barriers through music and also break down um, geographically the music we're playing. We can find all ama amazing things from all continents. So thank you again. Thank oh, you. So uh, William Chapman Niaho. This is Charles Tehran. Oh, <laughs> this feels like you've just opened your storehouse and shared a little bit of what there must be so much more, and it's uh, like a feast. Thank you so much for your generosity. Pleasure. And uh, in case you don't know it, well, first of all, I'm a <clears throat> co-chair of this conference, but this is the 2021, 2022, 2023 conference. <laughs> and Yahoo has stuck with us throughout it all and kept this uh, repertoire fresh and alive and shared it with us. So thank you so much on behalf of the Florida State Music Teachers Association. And I've seen that we've had many around the country joining us, it's not limited. And I myself am in North Carolina, so there you go. <laughs> thank you, what a magnificent job and a beautiful, beautiful playing, beautiful piano. And such a, such a journey you took us from Bach to, Spirituals, wow. So um, I'm not gonna to take too much longer because we're not quite done. Uh, so I want to uh, just share with those who are viewing uh, what our plans are for the rest of the evening. As, as wonderful as this recital has been, Yahoo has uh, generously agreed to spend a few more minutes with us. So uh, this will come in two parts. First of all, we're gonna have a, a question and answer session. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, so be thinking if you have any questions, I know I have some. Um, if you have some, just shoot them in the uh, chat box and then either I or Gail Berenson, my co-chair, will read them for Nyaho. So Nyaho, you will not need to bother reading them. Gail and I will take care of that. Um, <clears throat> And I'll start with the first one and then we'll just alternate back and forth. Then when we're done with that question and answer session, uh, Niaho is gonna put on a different hat. Another hat that he wears is our very first MTNA Vice President of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. And when we were originally planning to have him in person at our conference, uh, he had agreed to share some remarks on behalf of MTNA in that whole uh, arena. So he's generously again, agreed to share some remarks with us this evening. So that's what we're going to do. Please stick around. I'm just going to kind of become invisible, but um, I will be here to read uh, the first question and uh, just go ahead when you're ready and uh, shoot me or, or just put it in the chat box and uh, we'll wait on that for a moment. And I, I know I have some that are ready if uh, nobody else comes forth. I know that we didn't announce this ahead of time so you may want to have a few moments to think. Um, okay, so, um, well, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and yeah, because I, I have a lot of questions, actually. So, uh, well, one of the uh, aspects of your program that I so appreciated was uh, the fact that you included both these master works, but also pieces that we can think about as teachers. You know, you were thinking about your audience. This is an audience of teachers as well as musicians. Yeah. So um, I'm curious, in your own teaching, have you taught these pieces? Which ones of these have you taught? And how have you found them in your teaching? Have, have, um, have they been easy to teach? Have they been accepted in, um, let's say, competitions and in auditions and that type of thing? I know this is a whole new world that we're talking about. So I'm just curious about the pedagogical aspect, if you could say a few words about that. Oh, yeah. Um, 
Yes, I've been teaching um, these pieces. I have uh, taught uh, uh, My Scarf is Yellow, for example, Offbeat Shorty, My Broken Saxophone, some of these pieces. And I have really um, been pleased that the students have really, you know, my, you know, my little kids have really enjoyed playing them, you know, because I think they're just really, um, they're familiar with some of these jazz harmonies and, um, and that it's also available to them as, uh, you know, taking piano lessons as classical musicians. Um, so yes, I've had, I've, I've had lots of success in them. And what's been fun um, is actually using them as uh, ways to teach two note slurs. You know, for example, the, the very first one is really about two note slurs and, and um, you know, getting the students and to just also think about how you can play these two note slurs and you have these cross rhythmic things going on and then these wonderful jazz chords going on. So um, they've, been, they've been pretty much accepted. Um, uh, I've had, I've had uh, well, from my anthologies, you know, I've had other people um, uh, talk to me about how they've assigned some of these pieces to the students, and they've uh, they've gone and and won, you know, their festivals or competitions, and so it's been very heartening to hear. And also, what's very cool about this is I I, I was actually. I was actually in Florida several, several years ago at the Dreyfus Music School. And, and, um, and uh, it was just great hearing the students play um, pieces from volumes two and three and to hear all the different interpretations. And so that's, that's the wonderful thing. There's, you know, I want to encourage that people um, just really teachers really do some work in, in, um, in looking towards, you know, stylistic interpretation of pieces, but also realize that, you know, each student has a message to bring. And so therefore, you know, uh, we need more interpretations and different ways to view pieces. So, um, yeah, it's yeah. They've, they've been good. They've been well received. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Again, just uh, put them in the chat box. I have more if, if nobody else does. I'll wait a moment. <clears throat> okay, I'm, I'll, I'll go ahead. Well, first of all, um, I thought that was interesting how you just were speaking about the first piece being a great study in a two note slur. And, and so that's, I think that's kind of uh, revealing in a way, like um, it's, it's so fresh to have something different to teach something that's not different, something that's old, but it becomes new again. And maybe it's a way to reach a, a student in a way that other pieces wouldn't reach them. They might be more open to it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. That's, that's wonderful. So um, from your vantage point, uh, do you see um, that our repertoire is becoming more diverse? Uh, you know, I say from your perspective, because I know that you're, you're traveling, you're going to this conference, that conference, this festival, that festival. What is your view from the top, so to speak? How, how are we doing? With our diversity, I think I think uh, I think there's progress. There's definitely progress being made. There's definitely progress being made. But I think there's still a lot, a lot of work to be done. You know, I think uh, yeah, there's just still a lot of work to be done and um, to be explored. There's you know. Um, some wonderful uh, Filipino composers that need to be heard, you know, more um, music from 
you know, uh, South America and, and more music actually from um, Egypt or the Sudan. We need, we, you know, there's some really good music out there that needs to be heard and, um, and also used as, as music for, um, as substitutions. So, you know, um, yes, we can play Bach or we can play, uh, you know, a, uh, uh, a classical sonata. And then if we're looking for a piece, something romantic or, you know, has that kind of inflection, why don't we listen to or take on uh, Florence Price's um, Sonata, you know, mm. which is absolutely gorgeous. So there, I, I think there's still a lot of work to do, but um, th there's progress. I just, um, I was one of the adjudicators for uh, what we call Outstanding Artist Competition in Washington State. And I was so pleased to hear music by James Lee and, um, and other composers, you know, black composers. And, who, and, and these pianists just tore up the pieces that, I mean, they just really played, Spartan, you know, played the hell out of these pieces and won, you know, <laughs> they're very impressive, you know? And so um, there's great stuff out there you know, that needs, that needs to be um, explored. But um, we do have resources now, you know, with the internet, we've got a seat of the piano, which is a great website to hear all the, you know, new pieces. And it's so well organized. You have um, Ebony Music, which is uh, curated by uh, Dr. Claiborne, you know, there's great stuff out there, so we can find them. That's exciting. Uh, I see a question has come in, and I'm going to hand this over to my co-chair, Gail Berenson, to read that question. I will be happy to do that. And let me just say also that this was an incredible recital, and what a, an amazing way for us to conclude our conference. This is the last online event for the conference, and it, it was fantastic. And of course, just in terms of bringing repertoire available, making available repertoire to teachers, your anthology is so wonderful. I think a lot of teachers just don't know. I mean, all the things that you just mentioned will be incredibly helpful for our teachers because they don't know where to go for these resources and, and to find out what is actually available. Um, let me read you uh, Diana Dumlavala's um, question. She says, so much of this repertoire contains more complex rhythms. How do you help students overcome any rhythmic challenges they find in these pieces? Well, uh, that's a really good question. Um, I really believe that some of this music, you know, with these complex rhythmic things, um, one needs to clap them over and over again, you know, and not just count, you know, just, well, yeah, you have to do, you have to do a bit of counting. And I had to do the same thing. You know, some of, um, you may think that some of this music just came to me really easily. I was counting like crazy, you know, and then, you know, and I would do it very slowly you know, particularly, you know, like the Agbaja rhythm. Yeah, I knew the Agbaja rhythm, so that's not a very honest one, I should say. <laughs> but um, but some of these uh, these rhythms, you just have to do a lot of repetition, get students to dance them, get students to tap them out, you know, and just over and over until, you know, it sort of just becomes, oh, that's the rhythm, you know, that, you know, and it just suddenly starts becoming a part of you. And, you know, in a way it's like um, also using different um, learning traditions, you know, where there's this kind of rote learning where, you know, even in African uh, learning traditions, there's 
the master to the um, to the student kind of transference where um, they will drum a pattern and the student will do it over and over and over again until the master, you know, for example, you, the teacher, is able, you know, is able to see, oh, yeah, they're getting it, they're getting it, you know, and then you tell them to free it up or tell them to just, you know, write it or, you know, talk to them about maybe being a little bit ahead of a slightly ahead of the downbeat or a little bit later than the downbeat. So those are those are really legitimate things to talk about in rhythm. So um, yeah, you just have to be persistent and just know that you're going on a wonderful journey, you know, and your students will be very grateful for that. Thank you. <clears throat> I don't say any more questions and we, we definitely want to leave uh, time for you to to share some remarks but uh, just one final thought um, what you were just speaking of and the question itself it to me it just shows how much richer we are becoming um, be you know exposure to to rhythms maybe in a different way or different types of rhythms and or the, the heritage the the, the master uh, protege uh, relationship in that context, you know, um, it's not threatening, it's enriching. And uh, so with with those final thoughts, I'm going to, to hand it over to you to to uh, to share with with us your thoughts as the Vice President of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. Ah, uh, yes. Well, um, I am just well, first of all, I just need to thank your leadership um, for all the work you've been doing with diversity, equity, and inclusion. I mean, it's it's so incredibly important, and um, you know, your beacons, your beacons to um, the rest of the states as well. And um, as vice president, you know, when I took this on or accepted to do this. I mean, um, MTNA really, you know, took a big step. Um, there was quite a bit of pushback, I will, I will say, uh, you know, but the leadership decided, you know, it was time and they were just going to go ahead. And so I feel, um, I feel very supported by them, by the leadership. And I feel that, um, in my role as vice president, I need to also be supportive and let you know that, you know, um, if anyone needs any help, I am there to, I'm here to, um, to give you, you know, resources or to connect you with other people. I'm finding out that, um, that, there's so many different aspects of the DEI that I'm, and this being a new um, situation, I'm also, I'm also making it up as we go along. You know, um, it's very true. I have, I, you know, I confess, and and also that it takes courage. This is something I had mentioned. Um, earlier on, it takes courage to do this kind of work. You know, it takes courage for me to actually, you know, stand up in front of um, so many people and really say we need to we need to work on bringing awareness and to include other uh, musicians in our work, and that we need. Uh, for people to have a sense of belonging, you know, which is something that um, I I would say has been kind of hard to sort of put out, you know, in conferences. Um, my experience right up till quite recently, is just to just go and be maybe one of a handful of black people at conferences, but just have um, just plotted on because it was just very important. And um, 
now, you know, there's a sense of feeling, you know, that, yeah, I belong. And I hope other people will also start feeling that. I hope this, this conference, your conference, you know, you're making it available to um, the public will also, um, will also inspire other, others to join the chapter. It's really important. Um, how do we, how do we get people to feel they belong? You know, that's a very big question that um, I have to keep putting out as vice president. How can I make you all feel that you belong, you know, as, you know, in all aspects of music, you know, and all the diverse aspects of music. How can I make you feel you're just as important, you know, in terms of equity, you know, and your work is important. And also, how can I make you feel included, you know, no matter how, you know, your background or whether there's any disability or anything going on. It's very, very, it's, it's, it's a lot of work that we're doing. And I think Florida, I think Florida has just been a really great beacon. And also just the fact that um, your title is, you know, is very telling, you know, is very, um, it's very telling that you really want to invite people to know and for people to know that they belong, you know. So um, my work as my work as vice president is really to try and make connections, to try and uh, bring in people. I have a committee that of about there are about fourteen of us, and so. I've got, I've tried to be more geographically expansive um, and, and to just identify people who have been in certain parts of uh, the music field that I think are important that we need to incorporate. So, um, you know, one, one person or two people that um, I, feel need a lot of, um, they need to be really tapped for their information is Dr. Roberta Rust and uh, Dr. Connor Chi. And they are in, um, they, are, they are the experts. They have the knowledge of, Native American music. And this is something that we really need to kind of work on um, to um, help bring out all the amazing musics that have been um, not, you know, paid attention to, you know, also to um, have our curriculum or have our uh, teaching uh, students, you know, music to be more mindful of what is inappropriate in teaching music, you know, where there's this caricature going on with Native American music, you know, nobody understands, you know, people just don't understand the variety of music that goes on there. So um, there's a lot of work to do in America itself. You know, we need to uh, find a way to honor um, and to celebrate music by Native American composers, as well as African American composers and um, and as we're becoming more and more of a melting pot, you know, why can't we, you know, uh, work on music that includes Indian ragas and, uh, 
and to gamelan music. And we're working on that. And we're having uh, a, uh, a DEI track. I know it will be in competition with Gail's wellness track. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, right. you know, we just have to kind of find a way to, you know, to sort of like visit. I, I would love to visit and attend the wellness track because I am just so totally into into um, that. You know, I, I will say um, even in terms of wellness, um, just as a personal thing, you know, I had I, in 2019, I had a stroke. You know, and I essentially lost the use of my right hand. But here we are. I can sort of still, I can, I'm back playing. So, you know, there's a lot that I want to be at your sessions for, <laughs> you know. But there's also the the um, DEI track and we're getting Roberta Rust and Konichi and some other really good stuff going on. So I hope that makes sense. I hope yeah. that. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah. Oh, and, and, and I would like to encourage, I'd like to encourage uh, the Florida State Musics, music teachers to look at your local chapters and really work on programming. You know, I think programming is an incredibly important thing. I have a, um, uh, my local chapter have a wonderful Jessica, Jessica Hall, who has just done an amazing work bringing people in of all, you know, of all kinds. And it's just been so thought provoking that we are actually even getting some other, um, members from the different uh from like the seattle chapter to come and visit or to to come and hear what we have to say so um i recommend that you know maybe uh florida state leadership can encourage um dei representative representation in the local chapters you know, it's so incredibly important. And then, and, you know, maybe be under a state umbrella of maybe even having a vice president for DEI, mm. you know, <laughs> a committee. Yeah, Washington state has got a committee going. Um, other states are doing that. Uh, Colorado is doing the same thing. So, and I don't know, I think uh, I saw um let's see whether he's still there um ben rasnick oh yeah he's left those there's ben rasnick who's uh, a member of the denver um, area music teachers they're they've become very active in dei and i think that's going to be something that i hope we can just spread around so it becomes just second nature for us. You know, it's it's interesting because you mentioned the wellness track and, and wellness. Well, we're trying to do the same thing in terms of branching out and getting the word out about wellness because it impacts everybody. And it's the same thing with DEI. I think it's you're charting new new paths for all of us. And it's wonderful. And I really do hope that this conference can serve as a starting point perhaps for yes. for Florida and and allow us to branch out more in that area because you know we're dealing with all kinds of people and it's wonderful yeah i i want to uh just put a word in here to <clears throat> in case uh you've not had the opportunity to watch Diana Dumlevoila's presentation um, she is our leader and uh, she, <laughs> there she is. Uh, she has made a wonderful presentation on the Canadian female composers and it's just fantastic. So 
Uh, it's it's already started. So, but I, I appreciate that push. I mean, just that idea is a seed maybe being planted, and uh, who knows where it will go. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Diana. Here she is. Now, I love the idea of planting the seeds at the local association level, like at the grassroots level. I think that's a really effective way to go about just bringing more awareness to this issue for everyone. And when we plant the seeds there, then they will blossom and grow. And when we get to the state level of having our VP of DEI, it will just happen naturally, I think. So yeah. that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, and um, uh, one other thing uh, which I'm also hearing is um, even having uh, members doing some outreach to underserved populations, you know, uh, one of our chapters in Washington State um, had been doing that for underserved um, kids in the area. And it's just, and, you know, we provided materials and, and uh, found ways to supply them with, uh, with pianos, you know, in the church to, to play and also have people come in and visit and do master classes or, yeah. So uh, I, think, I think all of this has got to happen at the local level, you know? I'll give you a good example just very quickly. So when I was in Louisiana, I was, um, you know, I, you know I, I, I was invited to Southern University, which is in Baton Rouge by Myrtle David, Dr. Myrtle David, and to judge a competition there, the DuBose competition. And I was just so blown away because I had never seen so many African-American piano students. And, you know, and I was like, where, where have they been? <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and so it, you know, and it really stuck with me. And I also invited Gary Engel to go and he saw them and we've honored Dr. Myrtle David and she's doing an amazing work. But um, I really hope that um, we can invite these teachers with, you know, these amazing students, you know, to join our chapters and, you know, to learn from them as well as as you know, give information. So, you know, that's something we really have to do. Yeah. At the local level. And there's no other way than to do it at the local level. You know, the state level isn't just, you know, there's no way to find that, but right. they're up there. Yeah. Yeah, well, I had the same reaction. I was examining, I think, in Virginia for the Royal Conservatory, and I'm of half Indian descent. And I was the only Indian kid that I knew who was taking piano lessons. And all of a sudden there are all these South Asian kids taking piano. And like, where did they come from? And it's wonderful. Yes. It's great to yes. see. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, on behalf of FSM TA Nyaho, I just want to really extend and express our deepest, deepest appreciation for such a beautifully performed recital, as Thank well you. as a really informative and meaningful discussion on DEI and, and where we are and how we can move forward. We're really grateful that uh, you have found a way to share your artistry and love of this repertoire with us through the digital platform. We were still able to make it happen. And I don't think any of us could have imagined really a better way to end this online series of events. Um, so thank you so much again. Really, really appreciate really my it. Honor. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Before I give the floor over to our conference co-chairs, Gail and Charles, I would like to once again reiterate our organization's gratitude to both of you for your hard work, patience, because it's been three years, resilience and vision for this conference. It was literally years in the making, certainly not by our choice. Um, <laughs> however, I couldn't think of a better duo to lead with the planning of this conference as we navigated through all the challenges that we have faced in the past few years. And we have faced quite a few <laughs> challenges. 
So Gail and Charles, thank you so much from the bottom of all of our hearts. We are truly grateful to both of you. And I would also like to acknowledge Amy Tehran, our webmaster and Zoom controller extraordinaire for all her work to help make this conference happen. These three individuals, Gail, Charles, and Amy, they uh, need to be applauded and acknowledged for their commitment in ensuring this conference truly came to fruition. So thank you, all of you. And now I will pass it on to our conference co-chairs. <laughs> Thank you, Diana. And um, truly, um, it's it's been a labor of love for all of us, and um, we're we're really thrilled with the, the the final outcome. Obviously, we wish it could could have been held in person, but I think this is the next best thing. First of all, the conference has been an absolutely amazing conference with a wealth of valuable information. Um, the, First of all, thanks to all of our presenters for being so flexible in allowing us to showcase your knowledge and talents. And now that all of these sessions are archived and will be made available to the public, we hope that viewing this um, event, um, that people will take the time to, to really listen to all of them, watch them. And, and of course, here you have the ability to do it I, as many times as you wish. Um, I, I think it's amazing that FSMTA has been willing to do this at no cost to anyone, made it available to the public. And that means not only in the United States, I've been sending the links to uh, International Society for Music Education folks. And, and there, I know that they uh, intend to watch some of this. So um, I'm, I'm thrilled that we're doing that. And I especially want to encourage teachers to gather together and view the um, as a group. Um, this is a wonderful way to prompt discussions at local and district meetings. Um, teachers can share these videos with pedagogy students in uh, pedagogy class or in studio classes um, with all of your applied students. Um, there are so many ways that this um, incredibly valuable information can be shared. Um, so we, we certainly hope that you've all enjoyed and benefited from this 21, 22, 23 <laughs> virtual conference. Um, and we want to, uh, we want to invite you all and hope to see you at the 2023 FSMTA conference, which will be held at Florida Southern College in Lakeland, Florida. Um, and this time we hope we will be gathering together in person. Um, the theme, by the way, is exploring collaboration in the studio and beyond. So another exciting theme. Um, and so now allow me to hand off to my co-chair, Charles Turan. Thank you, Gail. Um, <clears throat> what a wonderful way to end this conference. Um, it's just, so inspiring. I'm getting goosebumps even talking about it. So thank all of you for joining us. Thank you, Niaho, for your generosity and uh, for sharing so honestly. I, I really appreciate that. Also, in case you didn't see it in the chat box, one, one final part of our conference just coming together uh, is the teacher's recital. And uh, so uh, watch for that. That is on our webpage and everything that is now on the webpage will become part of the special conference book. The links will all be there. And uh, so do check out that uh, teacher's recital. When Gail and I first began planning this conference, we knew one of our first steps was to choose a conference theme. Looking back now, it doesn't seem like we chose the theme at all. It chose us. Those discussions began over four years ago in 2018. There were a lot of forces, <clears throat> excuse me, forces separating our country and our world then, and a lot more now. But the message of this conference, as fulfilled by addresses that inspired us, presentations that informed us, and performances that illuminated us is 
Music is a force that connects all of us through bonds that are deeper and more secure than any force that divides us. Above all, it is my desire for each of you that this conference has given real reason for hope. This has only been possible through the dedication and determination of all who participated, culminating tonight in Yahoo's embodiment of diversity, equity, and inclusion through the richness of his programming and his sheer joy of sharing us diversity with such exuberance. In a moment, I will ask you to hear about our sponsors, but first, I want to acknowledge one individual without whom none of this would have happened, a certain webmaster who happens to share my last name. Now, please stay tuned for just a few more moments as we recognize the generous contributions of our sponsors and advertisers. This portion of the 2022-2023 FSMTA online conference is supported by the ongoing contributions of the following institutions and organizations. The Chopin Foundation of the United States, the Gulf Coast Community Foundation, the Music Teachers National Association, the Patterson Foundation, the Florida Gulf Coast University Bauer School of Music, the Florida State University College of Music, State College of Florida, Manatee, Sarasota, the University of Central Florida School of Performing Arts, the University of Florida School of Music, thank you.